Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. Today's video is the first video with this brand new setup. I hope you enjoy it. I just got a new Sony a7C. Incredible video quality. It is my Black Friday gift to myself. Today we are discussing my brand new song, Between the Lines, and I'm gonna hop inside the project so you guys can see how I wrote the song with my good friend Alice, AKA Midnight Amity. I'm gonna get into Ableton in a minute here, but you can check out the music video if you haven't heard the song up in the upper right-hand corner right now. It will take you to the video, you can stream it. Let me know what you think about it in the description of that video or the description of this video if you wanna be crazy. And let me know what you think of this video down there as well. Without any further ado, we're gonna jump inside the project of Between the Lines and I'll show you how I wrote it. If you enjoy this video, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive perks, including project file downloads, tools for your creative process, early access to videos, and more. Click on the card in the upper right-hand corner for more information. Awesome, so this is the Ableton project file of Between the Lines, my brand new record on enhanced recordings with my good friend Midnight Amity, as we said in the intro. I'm gonna go step-by-step step here and show you some of my favorite parts we're going to start off with the vocal because that's where the song actually started. Alice sent me this incredible heartfelt song about a relationship that she was in and how she felt. And I, I don't want to speak too much about it because I didn't write them, but I was incredibly moved by the lyrics of the song. And she sent me the vocal to start. So I want to start there. Let's go ahead and play this thing back. I know it hurts sometimes you notice I don't act close to you I give an inch, take risks, then run for cover. Beautifully written. I, I, I just adore these lyrics that she wrote. On the processing side of things, I actually had a little bit of vocal help from my good friend, Matt Lang. He's also on my creative team. He's a bit of an A&R for, for me on my management company. So shout out to Matt Lang. He did an incredible job DSing this track. I took my, my attempt at it, but I couldn't get it to where Matt got it. Essentially what I did was I, I broke off each individual S that she sang and I pulled them out onto their own track and I manually EQ'd the resonances out of each of the vocals. And then, you know, on this track, I could process them separately. So I put a low pass filter so it wasn't as abrasive and they're a little bit softer. I don't know what Matt did. He used, he used some Pro Tools magic and he got it sounding incredible. Yeah, on my side, we have a little bit of a gain boost. He came back kind of cold. So I gave it like eight or nine decibels. We did a little bit of a high shelf so that we, we rebalance the vocal so that it's brighter. I want it to really be in the forefront. A lot of presence, not weighed down with a lot of mids. I'm, I'm kind of a partial guy to mixes with a lot of high information. I like a lot of music in that space, like Porter Robinson and Maddie, and they mix really sharp, and it's just kind of my my taste. I have a compressor on here. Very deep inside my hope is Flattening out the dynamic range bit to go for that like pop EDM vocal sound. I have fresh air on this track as well, uh, giving it a little bit of a high boost additionally from the original. If I AB that, you can hear the difference. Very deep inside my hope is Just gives it that nice airy presence that it sounds so good in this type of trance. I've got a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb. I won't get too in depth on this. I actually just did a video on my vocal processing chain. You can check out the link to that in the upper right hand corner of this video. I encourage you to check it out if you're curious about how I do my vocal reverb and delay. And then I have a, a slight gain boost here as well and a little bit more of that high prioritizing uh, EQ. I actually sang the, the supporting harmonies for this record. As you can see here, if I... If you read between the lines, you know, know that, that I love you. It's just a, a small little supporting harmony in there. I think it, it adds a lot to the record. Here, I'll go ahead and play you the version with the main. If you read between the lines, you know that I love you. So subtle, but it adds a lot to the record. So then I'll, I'll toss all the vocals on. I did um, a little bit of processing on the harmonies and the ad libs, but nothing too much. Uh, mostly just panning, actually, on the harmonies. They came back really nice anyway. She actually had some reverb baked in. There's these ad libs. My heart, the lies are over. If you... The ad libs had reverb baked in as well, but I went forward and and low pass them slightly uh, 
for most of the record so that you know they're a little bit further back in the mix had some compression on there and some high pass as well the vocal bus just really gels really nicely together Deep inside my hope is angelic know what to do. she absolutely killed it so we started there and then i think what i added from there was the core chord progression and we can get into that here it's under the saw slash synth section so the first part of this record is this long droning pedal note essentially pedal tone it's it's a c i have a contact instrument here creating that cool floating pedal sound. Fresh Air has been a huge change to my workflow in the past year or two because it's it's got this ability to create high end without any sort of distortion or any other harmonically rich plugins like multiband compression and that sort of thing. It's it's almost black magic. I, I think that this is one of my most used plugins right now. I've got Supermassive on there as well, just creating this bed. And then I've got this cool faller that is called Cool Faller. It's the chord. It's a saw wave with some filter envelope on it. And I believe that I actually MPE'd this. So each note of this faller is actually falling in pitch slightly different from one another, um, as you can see by these lines here. And it just creates this cool cascading effect that you wouldn't get from just a traditional pitch bend. I think it's kind of neat. So then I have some more stuff towards the actual drop itself. I have this chord riser. And that's just the chord effect reversed. So I took this first chord and I played it through reverb and then I flipped it around and it leads straight into the chord itself, like so. If you wanna grab this patch, you can look at the screen right now. It's a saw wave with seven unison. It's got some detune on a sine wave. I think what makes it cool is this OTT that I have on the chain after some EQ. Again, I'm prioritizing the high end. I have some reverb on it. And yeah, I have, I have some high pass in certain sections to create tension. If I wanna drop into a section and get rid of the bass right before the next bass or the next section of the song where the bass really drops, I do that on a lot of different elements. You'll notice that across a lot of these things. I have, I have my filter frequency sweeping out over time. So that's the saw synth channel or bus, I should say. And this is the culmination. So pretty. I love that. I derived it from her vocal and it's it's just one of my favorite chord progressions I've done in a long time. So I've got the sub as well. Um, let's go ahead and bring this into those chords that we already had playing. Straightforward as usual. Have a detuned seven unison saw wave as like the main like Reese effect. It's creating that phaser sound in the bass. And they have a negative one octave sine wave. I probably could have broke this off into its own channel, but out of sheer laziness, I kept it. There's my cat. The macro to control those high frequencies of the filter. It's opening over time. You know, big trance secret weapon is cut off filter. So next up, we have the actual bass of the song, and this is this is awesome. So this one is just a saw wave with some filter on it. This one's not super interesting. The cool one is this guy. So it's also a saw wave with a filter moving. I also have a amplitude control LFO with it set to a 16th note. Both of these are set to a 16th note, to be fair, but I'm actually cutting off the end of the note so it actually has a gap between the notes, creates a nice like power between each note. Nothing else on the effects department. I have Isotope Trash 2 doing some distortion on here. I can A, B what it sounds like with and without it. Henson. Henson, get down. <laughs> Anyway, that's that's my main bass sound for the record. Side chained really heavily to the kick just to give it space. And with the sub, really cool. Fills out the bottom end nicely. So while we're on this musical kick, let's go through all of them. So we have the lead as well, which is that. 
I went super like DX7 80s FM with this. So it's it's just two sine waves against each other with an FM on the second channel. I have, um, or a second oscillator, I should say. Uh, I have a sine wave that's controlling the fine tune of the pitch on both of these oscillators. I have a pluck on the the cutoff of the, the filter so that it's creating that really super short plucked, almost like Fleetwood Mac effect. Rest in peace, Christine, one of my favorite songwriters of all time. I wanna be with you everywhere. Basically, I just wanted a slightly wet, really plucky sounding DX7-esque synth to create that super awesome like 80s pop feeling. I love that sound. Now let's go ahead and listen to these three together now. Sounding full and complete almost already. I have the ARP, which we have to go through as well. Let's go ahead and solo that. Kind of like classic trance, but like pop trance kind of ARP sound, almost Calvin Harris-esque. Love that. It's just a saw wave with some detune and a cutoff filter. <laughs> I should really just make sound design tutorials about how every sound I make is largely the same. It might actually be really funny to like make a series of like how to make a pad, how to make a lead, how to make a bass. They're all the same sound. It's just different parameters. So we have isotope trash on this. Kind of blasting it out. Here's without it. Trash is underrated. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And then I'm, you know, highlighting the high end. I'm trying to reduce the low end so that the high end is a priority. Pulling out some low mids. I have some delay pan and reverb on this, which is creating the spatial effect. It's kind of bouncing back and forth between the ears a bit. And there's a subtle delay on there just creating that, that little bit of creep. It's kind of in the distance in the background. Feels like it's adding to the space a lot. And as I get into these big buildups, I, I add more reverb. So it fills out this expansive space. I pull out the low end as well, so it feels like it's getting thin and far away. And then I very quickly bring it all back. Side chained, I have a gain utility, so some sections are quieter than others, just, you know, for the sake of mixing. And then I have a low pass for certain sections too, like this, for builds and what have you. So let's go ahead and um, play this in the context of the mix. Really quickly, let's take a look at the effects. I don't have too much going on here. I have this like sub drop. You can make this very easily in any synthesizer. I just use a sample because it's a waste of my time to recreate the same sound every time. Basically a sine wave or slightly harmonically rich sine wave with not a lot of high end that's falling in pitch like a pitch pen. I also have some white noise. This is pretty easy. I actually have a video on how to create this from like years ago, but I'm sweeping up with a filter. I'm doing an auto pan and I have some reverb on it. And as it gets higher and higher towards the top, I tend to automate the auto pan so it has this side to side effect here, as you can hear. If you're interested on in how to make this effect, you can click on the link in the upper right hand corner. So then we have um, some risers, not too much. I think that was a sample and then this one was my own. What a surprise. Saw wave, it's plucked at 16 notes on the cutoff filter. Um, we're doing a slight distortion, and then I have the parameter for the pitch bend set to two octaves. And then I have an impact on the big hits. Um, whenever I do a sub faller, I, I tend to do an impact as well for the high end. And honestly, that's most of the record. <laughs> so we do have some percussion. Here's the kick. Kick 19. Don't know where that came from. Great kick though. Maybe I should find out where it came from. Then on the percussion side, let's go one by one here. So I have this Oliver snare, which is really punchy, almost like disco-y, going for that 80s sound like I was saying before. This 
clap that's a little softer, but it has that reverb tail. It creates that, that nice atmosphere to the clap. And the two in conjunction create this awesome sound. I have the clap and snare slightly shifted so that the snare hits slightly later than the clap. The clap kind of precedes it. The snare really anchors it to the beat. And on the clap, I have um, some reverb. Yeah, not too complicated. Never get too complicated. I think that's the problem that a lot of producers face. It's they overthink and they, they, they think like you have to do things a certain way. Otherwise, you're not a real producer or what have you. And I, I, I hate that that ideology. I think that if you get too caught up in that, you end up making worse music because it's not the right way to do it. And if you just do it how you think it should sound, you know, chances are you're going to make better music. That's not to say there isn't, you know, fundamental rules that maybe you should abide by and might deem the best results. But I think that in the end, whatever sounds good is what you should do. So carrying on, we have a hi-hat. Nothing to see here. We have some vintage verb on that hi-hat, filling in that space a little bit. We have a secondary hi-hat. And this one has a delay and that's creating like this shuffled effect. Without this, it's actually straight on. I love using that effect to just create some stereo width in my hats. And then I have a 16th note hat, genuinely. It's kind of shuffling with the velocity, so it's a little bit bouncy. Side chain to the kick, so we're actually removing the hi-hat whenever the kick hits. It creates this nice bounce. We have the 80s snare, flagship of many of my songs. I think these are largely just the samples with some reverb on them. I just found them on Splice years ago, and I love them to death, and I use them on everything. And I encourage you to do so, too, now you know what they are called. Let's go ahead and play this thing all together so you guys can hear the finished product. I think we're going to call this video a wrap. No goals, no more pain. That comes with us because we're okay. If you read between the lines, you know that I love you. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this song and you want to hear it again, go check out the music video I told you about before. Let me know if you hear this song on the radio, if you come across it on Spotify. I'm always curious where you guys hear these records. And let me know what you think of the song and this video in the comment section of this video. I hope you guys like it. Me and Alice loved putting the song together. We loved putting the music video together. I actually did a vlog about the process of putting this video together, and it was a real um, nail biter. I should say, we almost had a complete failure and it almost didn't happen. If you enjoyed it, give the video a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike and let me know why in the comment section. If you're curious about future videos and you wanna see those, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. I'm Julian of Julian Gray Media. I'm hyped on this new video setup. If you didn't already notice, and I can't wait to make some more videos for you guys. I will talk to you guys in the next one.